So, uh, as you understand, my my program is uh, probably much more in the position of the sixth possibility, which is uh, to separate the destiny of the one from the destiny of the infinite, to propose a philosophy which is appropriate to, to Cantor, and uh, to propose to the possibility of a creative access to the infinite. And not only and purely immanent access. I, I explain this point. Uh, I think that uh, in Spinoza or Nietzsche or Deleuze, we have an access to the infinite under the condition of uh, the one, the name of the one is. Uh, life, but I think that finally this access is a realization, like in the classic uh, vision. It's uh, the realization of something virtual. Deleuze name all that actualization. So creation is actualization because the place where the infinite and the one are the same is virtual. It's the virtuality of life. So it's an ontology of the virtual, an ontology of the virtual as the point where we find the identity between the infinite and the one. So it's something like a purely immanent God, without the name of God. So it's really the dependency of Spinoza. Certainly. And infinity is not separated. And infinity is not without the one. Infinity is without the one, but without separation from the world and from our existence. So it's an immanent position of the identity between the one and the infinite. It's a very interesting position, but I think that for me, but it's a choice, I return to this question of choice, for me it's too much classic. <coughs> too much classic. <laughs> But with my definition of classicism, naturally, there are too much classic, that is too much in the sense of realization, realization, actualization of uh, something which in some sense exists before as virtual, exists as in a latent form, is an indistinct form, in the potency of life. But for me, life is purely neutral. Purely, uh, uh, it, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it, it's not uh, 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 probably a, a creative uh, position. So, 
I must maintain that there is a distinction between creation and actualization. That we cannot think completely a creation as an actualization. And that actualization is too much near realization. That is too much classic. <laughs> And it is why my program is different, but in relationship to the other program as always, is to really separate the one from the infinite. There is no common name for the unity of the one and the infinite. There is not something like the name life, precisely, which is from Spinoza to today, the name of that sort of new immanent unity between the one and, and the infinite. So complete separation, so there is, there is, in some sense, the one does not exist. There is no uh, fundamental name, if you want. Neither God, nor life, nor something like that. There is only pure and neutral multiplicities. Nothing works for us. <coughs> Neither life, nor history, uh, nor God, nor destiny. Nothing works for us. <coughs> So we cannot realize something. Because realization is always on the supposition that there is something before the action. Something which, we, we, which works for us. Sorry. So maybe something exists like a mediation. but not like a condition. But before to go in the difficulties of all that, which are very numerous difficulties, in fact, the question is really, uh, it's really a difficult one. Uh, I want to precise, uh, precise the, the question of the choice here. What, we, what, what are the possibilities in the sense of philosophical orientations? What are really today the different philosophical orientations? In the point where we are in the third sequence, uh, uh, but in a, uh, in a difficult moment of the third sequence, where there is a, 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 something like a, a strange fight between Romanticism and Classicism inside the third sequence, if you want. Like today, in the third sequence, the third period, we, we have a, a fight between the first and the second sequence. Romanticism, but with a very dangerous nihilism on one side, and classicism, but with a terrible something which is also very dangerous, which is the disparition of creation and the victory of pure realization individual realization as a unique norm. So a classicism of individual destiny to have a good life in the sense of the realization of a finite 
number of possibilities. That is for me to, to become something like an animal. But I, I love animals. <coughs> But it's really to, it's really to, to have a, a very short vision of life, of human life. A very a vision of human life without any greatness. But on the other side, uh, we have uh, the, the, the possible return to romanticism, but uh, without uh, uh, any spirituality, without any God, without any religious framework and so on, today romanticism practically must be a form of nihilism, a form of destruction of yourself, of the self, in exper experience without any guarantee, without any norm, without any vision. And it's, it's a strange situation. I think it's our situation today. The, that sort of definition of the third sequence by a struggle between the first sequence and the second sequence. And so, in some sense, we must open the third sequence. <coughs> we are inside, but we must reopen or open once more the, the third sequence. The third sequence was the struggle between science and religion. The beginning was the struggle between science and religion. But I think today the, the struggle between uh, science and religion is without uh, any interest. <coughs> without an interest. So we have the struggle between uh, classicism and romanticism, in fact. But romanticism is practically no future, <laughs> and classicism is practically uh, uh, to have a good place on the market. It's not a very interesting choice between no future and the market. So maybe we can, uh, if philosophy is something, philosophy must help to find another way, <coughs> another choice. And it is why I want to finish this lesson by explaining, clarify exactly the possible choice. And it's a real choice that we, 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 that we must do uh, in our life, uh, and we are in this choice, certainly. First great possibility, you maintain a close relationship between the one and the infinite. You maintain this relationship. It is the one and the infinite. It's a very fundamental option. You, you, surely you can say all that is very abstract and so on, but not, not at all. <coughs> Everybody <laughs> decides something concerning this problem without knowing, naturally. It's difficult to find uh, somebody who say, uh, last night I have decided to maintain the relationship between the one and the infinite. <laughs> okay. <coughs> If we find something, somebody like that, <laughs> immediately you, you write me <coughs> that you have found something like that. But, uh, it, uh, but, but it's the abstract form of the choice. But the choice is here. Yeah. The choice has been made in some sense. No. So you maintain the close relationship between the one and the infinite, and either you have faith in the existence of a God, you maintain in, inside the third sequence faith in the existence of a God, 
And so you maintain the transcendence of the Christian age. And probably you, you have a, as a duty to, to transform the idea of God in some sense. outside the pure vision of power. I think this more interesting way in uh, this direction, which is not mine, but which is a, a really a, a possible choice, is the most interesting orientation is the orientation in the direction of the weak God, the God of, uh, of uh, weakness and the pure God of uh, good, without any power. <coughs> it's a, and so, it's the first possibility if you maintain the close relationship between the one and the infinite. But you, 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 you can also do not maintain this phase, you can have no faith in the existence of God. For you, God is dead, so the Christian age is really finished. And so, you maintain the relationship between the one and the infinite, but not in the form of a God, but in the purely immanent form, And it was what I was speaking just before. Nietzsche, Deleuze, and Spinoza, too. And the name of the relationship between the one and the potency of the infinite can be potency of life, infinity of forms of life, creativity of nature, and so on. So it's a, the two uh, first possibility, and you, you, you understand that in the first possibility, probably the question is to propose a new vision of God, in fact, not, not, not by necessity a new religion, because in the framework of a religion, you, 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 you can transform the concept of God. That's been the case many, many times. God is not uh, absolutely something uh, purely <coughs> purely mobile, absolutely, absolutely not. And in the second vision, the immanent vision of the relationship between the one and the infinite, we, uh, you must transform probably the, the concept of nature or something like that, the concept of life or the concept of nature. This uh, second tendency is very active today, very active, to have the nature as a fundamental reference, because nature is a point where lies creativity. And with the fear of destruction of nature and so on, ecology, some radical sense. The other big choice is to suppress the relationship between the one and the infinite. You suppress the relationship between the one and the infinite. Now, either you maintain, inside this choice, either you maintain faith in the existence of something divine. I don't say exactly a God, but something divine. Which is not the realization of a unity between the one and the infinite, naturally. Because we are inside the second great choice. You suppress this historical and fundamental relationship between the one and the infinite. 
And but you you have faith in the existence of something divine, and you must return either to the multiplicity of gods inside the nature itself, a new paganism, or once more to a god without real power, in some sense to a finite god. And you are, uh, you must create what I can name a new spirituality, a new spirituality which is in close relationship to nature too. So we must find in this option, uh, the, the, the work is to find something divine uh, in nature itself, in existence itself. Not in the form of a separate one, but something which is in div different forms inside the real world, inside nature. Maybe some gods, <coughs> because it's a possibility to us to create a new paganism. Because if we have a sort of return to classicism, we have also some return to the possibility of diversity of differences between gods or differences between some uh, divine forms of existence inside the world and not outside. We can find some paradigm of all that in oriental culture, much more than in western world. This idea that there is something divine uh, in some aspects of the sensible world. It's, it's, it's near Buddhism, much more than near the Occidental, the Western tradition. Or you have not, that is, uh, uh, God. Uh, God is dead, really, uh, we cannot find something divine uh, in the world which is neutral, which is as it is. Uh, there is no appropriate particular appropriation between us and the world. And uh, uh, you affirm that uh, we, human beings, we are uh, wandering in the infinity of what exists. We are not uh, at a place at a, which is a sacred place or a divine place. We are the great wanderers of the infinity of what exists without any last resort, without any guarantee. And in this last uh, possibility, in last possibility of choice, we have a clear philosophical duty. First, to precise and develop a concept of the infinite, appropriate to its objective nature. Precise the possibility of differences inside the <coughs> realm of infinity. So to introduce the multiple inside uh, uh, the question of the infinite, to achieve the separation between the one and the infinite. If uh, we must separate the one and the infinite, we must appropriate the infinite itself to the multiple to multiplicity.
Second, to examine the question of truth, because it's very difficult to have a, a, a real notion of truth without any transcendent guarantee, without anyone. The classical concept of truth is always in relationship to something transcendent. And that it's another question. If there, if there exists no truth, there cannot exist something like philosophy. You can have drama, you can have morality, you can have religious vision, but certainly not philosophy. The beginning of philosophy is to separate uh, truth and opinion. If we have only opinions, philosophy is of no use at all. But it's not simple to have an idea of what is the truth in the context of the complete separation between the one and the infinite, in pure multiplicity, in fact, in a world without any guarantee, any transcendence, any God, and without something divine in the world itself, what is the truth? Very obscure question. And if we can solve this question, the third point is to examine the question of action and the question of creation as something else than realization. And for all that, we, we, we find many difficulties, and uh, the first difficulty is to, to precise the concept of the infinite, the infinite without the one. So, as you know, my choice is uh, on this orientation, but uh, I want to say why, uh, 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 to begin. Finally, you see, uh, you, you have uh, four possibilities. <coughs> it's finite. <coughs> it's really finite. <coughs> there are four possibilities. Uh, if uh, the one and the infinite are in relationship, We have faith in the existence of a God, and so we must propose something like a new definition of God, that first, first choice. Second, you have not faith in a God, but you maintain the relationship between the one and the infinite, so we, uh, we have a purely immanent action of the infinite, and so uh, we must propose a new concept of creativity <coughs> of life or creativity of nature. Or a new conception of becoming, if you want, more generally. Third choice, you, you destroy, you suppress the relationship between the one and the infinite, but uh, you have faith in the existence of something divine, something which is a possible reference, something which is an image of perfection. And so we, you, you propose some sense a new religion, but not a new religion of transcendence, not new religion of uh, the God as a power and a transcendent power, but the religion uh, may be a multiplicity of gods by a pure return to the classicism, may be uh, a new God which is uh, inside the world as uh, fragmentary image of uh, possible perfection. 
en finale ou reduce to the choice uh, inside uh, the pure multiple uh, without any uh, immanent or transcendent references to the one as such. So you are, uh, all these choices are real possibilities and they exist naturally Uh, as uh, philosophical tendencies. What, what are my objections against the three other choices? <coughs> you know, uh, it's always uh, more interesting to have the exposition of a choice that an exposition of the negative reason to have this choice much more than another. I agree with the laws of this point. Positivity is always more interesting than negativity. It's a very important political problem. A very important political problem. We return to this point because it's precisely the question of the place of infinite in political determination. But I, I must say some words concerning my difficulties with the three other choices. Concerning the, concerning the first possibility, in my conviction, it's a, it, I see The, this position I like a reactive position. I am developing a concept of what is a reactive subject in uh, my uh, logic of the world. Reactive subject. Reactive subject is not something which is completely in reactionary vision, not at all. Reactive subject is not a subject which uh, repeats something which is old, which is past, which is finished. Because a reactive subject must create something new. For example, a new vision of God, in the case of the first possibility. So when I say reactive subject, is that the subject is, in some sense, a reactive one, but it's not that the subject does not create anything. It's much, it's much more complex, it's, uh, just to... So I think that the reactive position is uh, always to maintain with something new the old sequence inside the new sequence. It, no, it's a, it's a problem you can find examples of. When we are in a new situation, but you, your desire is to maintain something of the old situation. <laughs> to maintain really something of the old situation is a new situation. You must create something new. <coughs> That is the newness of the old sequence, the new forms of the old sequence. Because what is finished is finished. So if you want to maintain what is finished, you must create something new beyond this end. And it's always an interesting position For example, a new vision of what is a god. To maintain God, finally. But to maintain God, the God of the second sequence, inside the third sequence, we must modify the concept of God. And to create a God appropriate to the third sequence. But that is a reactive position. Reactive subjectivity. 
The most important point is to maintain the old form of the problem. Concerning the second choice is my discussion with Deleuze or Spinoza. And it's, uh, I, it's, I think that, that life is, is not a possible name for a new form of a relationship between the one and the infinite. I think that life is a purely blind process, a chemical blind process. And so uh, there, there, is no, there is no creative possibility in the sense of true thinking in life as such. It's a very complex discussion, naturally. Right? Very often in thinking, we must work against the blind process of life. and not with it. And so, we must find the origin of novelty, not in continuity of life, but in some ruptures. Life as such in its creative process, which is a blind process, completely blind process, completely neutral, completely indifferent to our destiny, in fact. Human being can disappear like an uh, old monster. <coughs> there is nothing in life for us. Actually, we must live. <coughs> Without life, there is no thinking at all, certainly. But it's not because without life, there is no thinking, that thinking is with life. <coughs> Concerning the, the third position, I think that paganism, a new paganism, is uh, for me naturally also uh, reactive uh, subjectivity, a reactive position, but More important for me is that it's a, it's a purely aesthetic position, I think. It's a purely aesthetic position. A very beautiful aesthetic position in some sense. Mythology, uh, many gods and so on, is really an aesthetic uh, world. <coughs> And to create a new mythology is a temptation, is something interesting. <coughs> but for aesthetic reasons, finally, much more than existential reasons. And uh, the weak God, the poor God, I think it's only a projection. It's a projection of our experience, and today, more than ever, our experience that a new truth, a new norm, a real creation, is always weak at the beginning that there is always a real weakness of a new creative disposition. Especially today. Especially today because today, for objective reasons, power is not on the side of creation. Power is on the side of pure continuation of what exists. And power is on the side of abstraction. 
because Monet is abstraction. And Monet is the image, the most important symbol of power today. And so uh, uh, it's true, it's, it's, it's a reality that a new truth is, is like a weak God. That a weak God, a poor God, a Franciscan God <coughs> is on the, on the side of, uh, of the creativity of truth today. We cannot have simultaneously today truth and glory. <coughs> Truth and power, truth and strength. There is something weak, something uh, poor in all what is really important today, really important from the point of view of uh, <coughs> human beings which are not purely animals. It's true that we can have a good life, in some sense, without any relationship with truths, uh, new gods, uh, universality, and so on, today. Because the norm of a good life is the norm of the market. And so, uh, if, if, if we want to be engaged on the, in the way of uh, a new truth, and in the condition where we have no guarantee on the side of the relationship between the one and the infinite, certainly the beginning of all that is perfectly weak, perfectly without any real importance for the world as it is. And I think that the, 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 idea, the, the idea of a new weak God uh, poor God is only a projection of that sort of situation, a sort of generalization of, a sort of image, if you, if you want, of our situation today, which is that novelty is without glory, without immediate potency. That is absolutely the situation. And, uh, it is, it, is, it is why I, uh, I think that uh, we must uh, do the choice of uh, the multiplicity as such without any forms of transcendence, without any immanent fusion between the one and the <coughs> infinite, and without of a God, even a very poor and immanent God. But once more, uh, difficulties uh, are uh, numerous, and uh, I don't begin with difficulties today, <coughs> but only tomorrow. <coughs> Thank you.